All right, guys, welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to go over this great email that was sent from a subscriber. That's from a guy, he is 54 years old, and he shares this story that started about 30 years ago when he was foolish and crazy enough to get married to a gal he barely knew. You're going to see, guys, that this when he was young, he had no self-worth, no self-esteem given his family situation, but he was a very hard-working, industrious guy and did very well for himself from the get-go at an early age and unfortunately attracted the wrong girl that was a completely and totally using him for his money and milking it for all it's worth. And you're going to see here he makes tons of mistakes, letting her walk all over him, rack up all this debt, just treat him like garbage, and he took it. However, eventually after a few years an event happens, which I'm not going to say, I'm going to let you guys find out in real time, that made him truly see, have an epiphany of who she was his whole life, and then in that moment, a rock bottom turns things around, is born again hard, does everything he can to turn himself around, gather evidence, and through a well-planned out way of doing so, gets his revenge and turns things around, and it is great. It is one you will definitely enjoy, and believe me, I was smacking the hell out. So it got to the point I was smacking him so much in the story, I eventually had to stop because my I'm getting tired of doing that. My shoulder's getting sore. I was, it was shoulder day at the gym yesterday and chest day, and I'm tired of lifting my arms. But anyhow, guys, there's a lot of very important lessons in this story you're going to see about rushing into things, why it's so important to build up your self-esteem, where you got to kick people out of your life, you got to listen to people that care about you, how gals deliberately will pick out guys that are starting to have some success when they're ready to settle down, and will milk everything for its wor- what, it, what it's worth and take advantage of these guys. And, of course, paying attention to and acting upon the bazillion red flags that many of these types show you and how when people in your life do you wrong, including your own family, you have to cut them out like a cancer. Otherwise, that's going to make your life a living hell. And you'll see how this guy... He, where, where his life is today and it's fantastic and it goes to show you all you guys out there that have made mistakes or you're in a place right now that you just feel like garbage because of the mistakes you made or you don't think highly of yourselves you can turn things around but you have to have a can-do attitude and be and, and on a quest a mission to make things better for yourself and you can and you will hear here how this guy does it so you'll definitely enjoy this he says uh, SSM thank you for all the great work that you do I've been listening to your channel for almost, from uh, almost the beginning and wish you were around when I was young. Your stories are both instructive and entertaining. I know this story is a little long, so edit as you see fit or maybe sp- split it up over a couple of videos. Nah, I'll do it all in one video. And I'm not editing anything. This is too good. I have changed the names of the primary characters in the story for obvious reasons, but it's okay to refer to me as Mike as long as you keep my last name anonymous. Bro, I'm not going to share anything because I can see, obviously, through your email and all that, your last name. Guys, I will never reveal people's names, email addresses, personal information that's in that email, any of that stuff. But I do encourage you guys, whenever you write your stories about your situations or past, change the names. Change the name of the people involved, change the locations, things like that. Just That makes it easier on me. Okay. Uh, I am 54 years old and was widowed from my second wife of 17 years about four years ago. I passed along my SSM values to my two sons and even to my daughter. I'm also the wise sage at work and have a reputation for helping the young bucks at work with some red pill advice. Uh Uh-oh, I said the R word. I often send them to your channel. Well, bro, I appreciate your support and and I'm glad to hear that you've learned a lot and you're helping the young guys. Good, we need more mentors like you. Uh, Recently, I've jumped back into some casual dating. Oh, how's that going? And was going to write a story about an insane blind date that I had. When I told a longtime friend about my intent to do that story, he said that I should instead write about my first wife. So instead, here is my journey about a wife, a brother, and a kidney. I hope you enjoy, and if you do, I might write about my blind date later down the road. I'm going to say right now, bro, get your your story, get your start... Digging into the past and remembering everything properly because I want to hear that story. Send it to me. Uh, It all started when I was 22 years old. My self-confidence was a zero and my only role model was my ultimate blue pill father where my my mom was more of a man than he was. He used to take out all his failings on me while he worshipped and spoiled my sisters and my older brother. Smack to your dad, jackass. You know how many guys have that dad like that? Except in his situation, this guy's dad is a total a-hole. 
However, I was always industrious and hardworking. And after working nearly full-time and putting myself through two years at a technical institute, I landed a great job with a top company in my field. Awesome, bro. You focused on your grind, your purpose, making something to yourself. And notice he said, I was industrious and hardworking from an early age. Well, probably whether you realized it or not, you were doing that to get the fuck away from your family. Anyway, I started to develop my high net worth, but still had low self-worth. I noticed that with a nice car and having a little bit of money, I would start attracting some attention from a certain kind of woman, which I can now correctly identify as a yellow-breasted money sucker. That's how it goes. That's why I tell all these guys, once you start, you get out of college or you get out of, you get your certification in whatever trade you've done, whatever it is, and you get that job and you start making some money, you know, you, you, you upgrade from the, the the crappy clunker you had in high school and college to actually a decent looking car, dressing a little better, you know, that's when they start paying attention because by then they're looking for the meal ticket. They, they're done rolling the hay with Chad and Tyrone temporarily. And now they want a ring on their finger because all their girlfriends are getting rings on their fingers. And they're going to scout for that nice guy. That w- What's called often the beta male provider. That's a term. And these beta male providers fall for it. That's why I warn these guys to be careful. Enter my first wife. Let's call her Cindy. To me, she was a 10 and a queen. Smack. I don't want to hear this royalty shit. But that was, for, that was early. That was 22-year-old you talking. But as the song goes, and I found out later, she ain't pretty, she just looks that way. Looking back at it, she was more of a 5 than anything and had a likability factor of a 0. I was just happy to have someone, anyone. We started going out, and after 4 months, I received a big promotion. Suddenly, she started to even show even more interest in me, and at her behest, she moved into my apartment. Smack! 4 months? Now, I know you're all yelling and carrying on, this dude's crazy. If this guy's got no female attention, pretty much, up until this point, and I'm guessing probably no hoo-ha, all of a sudden this pretty girl's paying attention, it went right to his head. Well, the wrong head. Moving in for much, because he's thinking, yes, I'm going to get all the love and all the time, and it's going to be wonderful, magical, just like the movie said, blah, blah, blah. Well, let's see how wonderful, magical it's going to be. Within another six months, we were married. Smack, smack. Jesus Christ. So you've known her like less than a year and you're already married to her. She was counting on this. She knew you would do this. She s- scanned the room like the Terminator, found her vic- the victim, and was- knew that you'd marry her ass because you're the only loving that she, you were, she was the only girl you were used to getting or a hot girl, whatever. She had your number, man. And yeah, this was like 30 years ago or something. Guess what? Nothing's changed. Six months. I should have known something was up. You think? As she was constantly pressing me, and when I finally popped the question, she didn't even look at me. She just looked at the ring. She burst out crying. Can you bring it back for something more elegant? Yeah, I can feel the love. By elegant, she meant three times more expensive. I ended up buying her a ring that cost nearly six months of salary and drained my entire savings. Smack! All for some freaking pussy? Dude, a fraction of that money you could have used to every week get a smoking hot call girl to do whatever you wanted as opposed to this. Now, maybe on some level that you were hoping to get married and start a new family because your family life situation sucked. I don't know. That's one reason a lot of guys rush into a marriage because they want to start their own family and they're because they can't stand their own family. But regardless, I'm sure it was about about what was down down south. Well, watch how this goes. When I told my father this, he said, "This is his dad saying this. It was a man's duty to keep his woman happy, and my role was to serve her and worship her." Yes, he said, worship. In contrast, my longtime friend told me to run. I regret to this day not listening to him. Well, smack to your dad. Worship her. Yeah, how well that work out for your dad since your mom obviously ran the house. See what happens when young guys have the wrong role model? But I think your dad was always jealous of you because you said that he treated everybody else great in your family, your sisters, your brother, but treated you like crap. He obviously knew that you were going someplace in this world and he was just trying to fuck with you. 
The marriage was in trouble from the start. Really, I never would have guessed. While I was building my career, Cindy was doing just the opposite. She changed her career from part-time retail work to full-time professional shopper. All she would do is buy expensive crap and then complain that her, her friend's husbands made more money. The SCX was almost non-existent, and when it did happen, it was cold, clammy, and awkward. Ha! Huh. Gee whiz, but I think more than a few times I told guys. They get roped in because they were, you know, the girl saw they were easy. And the second they said I do, the SCX became non-existent. And if it was the SCX, it was the most boring starfish SCX ever. And that's it. Meanwhile, I guarantee you they're going to have their knees met by Chad and Tyrone who got everything. But these young guys don't get this. And he said here, his friend told him don't do it. Nope. I know better. You don't know her. No, your friend knew her. Uh, worse yet, to fund her lifestyle, I was also doing contract work on the side. I'd come home from my 11 to 12 hour work day to a messy home. I would end up cooking for both of us, cleaning up, and then going to bed. He's writing smack, smack, smack. Yeah, smack, smack, smack. I'm just tired of fucking smacking you at this point, dude. What the fuck? You're doing all the work. You're cooking. You're cleaning. The house is a mess. You're not getting the SCX. Why aren't you laying down the law? I'll tell you why. Because he said in the beginning, I had no self-confidence. This is why I encourage guys to work hard to build their self-confidence. And and also, you don't rush into relationships or marriage or anything like that. I'm sure a freaking hiring a hooker at this point would be a lot better deal for you. Uh, even after I was doing everything, she would often scream at the top of her lungs, I can't do it all. When I would ask her to do the simplest of things, such as call the plumber to fix a backed up toilet. Cindy would also regularly give me the silent treatment for no reason. Manipulation 101. She wouldn't even reply to good nights, how was your day, and worse yet, I love you. Just a, just simple cold silence. Well, she's an asshole, but the thing is, I guarantee she became more of an a-hole as time went on because you kept putting up with her shit. You know, she had no respect for me initially, certainly didn't love you and was using you. But the more you didn't check her or put up with her bullshit or put it in her place or whatever, you know, call the fucking plumber, clean the fucking dishes, cook something, the more she had more less respect for you and treated you like garbage. <clears throat> for our first anniversary, I bought her flowers and jewelry. Why? What did she do to deserve that? That night, she finally broke her silence and said the jewelry I bought her would look good on her at a club tonight and with her friends. I wasn't invited. All I could think of was what my friend had told me so long ago, run. So on your anniversary, she wants to go out to the club with her friends. Gee, I wonder what she'll be doing there. Around the same time, my pampered brother, who was about a year and a half younger than me, started having health problems. His kidneys were failing and he needed a doctor. I was happy to donate as he was my brother after all. Cindy was furious. She screamed, what about me? How are you going to support me? For the first time in our relationship, I pushed back and said, he's my brother and it's not just about you. Good for you. She bellowed back, as long as your work will pay for you your time off and you do more contract work ahead of time, I give you permission. <laughs> I was seething, but I agreed to it. Smack. I give you permission to give your kidney to your brother. Your brother's an asshole, and we're about to find out just how big of an asshole his brother is. And... She's, you know, giving you shit about this. Dude, at this point, you deserve what you get. It is what it is. You had warnings from your friends. She's treating you like dog shit. You, you've reached the point now that I don't feel bad for you. And nobody else is going to feel younger you. You deserve, you deserve... I get shit all the time by people saying, SSM, you victim blame. There's a point when somebody keeps doing so much stupid shit and putting themselves in the same situations that they got to take responsibility for putting themselves repeatedly in said situation. No, you're not getting away scot-free here. You you have, you have are somewhat to blame here. So now my work days were still 11 to 12 hours, but now I was working an additional 68 hours a day on Saturday and Sundays. Tell the bitch to get a job. I was giving and giving, and she was just taking like a gluttonous and remorseless so. Cindy was uh, alternating now between screaming at me, giving me the silent treatment, or now the newly tactic of personal belittlement. She would tell me I wasn't a good provider. I was a poor lover, even though she, that, that had stopped. I was fat, I was weak, etc. Just when it couldn't get any worse, it did. On November, 20, on November 11th, Remembrance Day in Canada, it was tr truly a day to remember. It was also our second anniversary. 
During my lunch hour, I had to drop some paperwork to my brother regarding the kidney donation. When I pulled up to his townhouse, I noticed the car that I bought Cindy just outside. Huh. She must be going to see him with a, a get well basket because he's sick or something like that because she's such a kind, thoughtful, loving gal. That's mu that, that, that must be what it is. I wasn't sure what to make of it, but I, did, I didn't think it was nefarious. I knocked on the door, and when there was no answer, I opened it up and was going to put the paperwork on the kitchen table. That is when I heard moaning and grunting. I guess somebody's on the throne, having a hard time because it couldn't be anything else. I peeked around the corner, and then there was Cindy and my brother having relations on the couch. Remember when your friend told you to run from her? Remember how she's treated you like dog crap from the get-go? Now she's doing your brother. But who's the bigger a-hole in the situation? The brother. As he pointed out, the spoiled, pampered, treated like gold from the father, brother. Who you were going to give your kidney to. I ain't giving this motherfucker my kidney. I was devastated. I slinked down behind the stairs, quietly opened the door, and, and skulked out. Skulked out. I no longer had any self-respect. My friend, given your actions, there was no self-respect. I was completely and utterly torn down. On the drive home, something changed in me. I felt like Andy Dufresne coming out of the sewer pipe in the Shawshank Redemption. Andy had his redemption, and so would I. Yes. Yes. It's about time. I'm sorry you went through this shit, dude. She is a piece of shit, and an a-hole took advantage of you, and I'm sorry. However, you just kept putting up with it. Uh, it wasn't easy. I was worn down, beaten, and an emotional wreck. But there was something about hitting rock bottom that was liberating. I knew it would be hard, but I couldn't. it couldn't be worse than what I went through to get here. And I started my plan of revenge. I enjoyed putting the pieces in place, but the hardest part was not letting anyone know that I, what I had planned. Continuing the charade that everything was fine was, was torturous, at least while I was playing the dope and I wasn't one. Yeah, a lot of people, they reached the point they hit rock bottom. It, is, it does become liberating because they're like, you can't get any worse from here. Now, things can always get worse, but you get my point. And a lot of guys, when they reach that point, become so numb, and then they formulate their plan. So this is not totally unrealistic here. I took a four-pronged a four approach. I first went hunting for an attorney. I knew this was going to be costly, but I didn't care. I didn't want Cindy to get a single penny. And I was in the mindset that if I had to be in court for years, so be it. She contributed exactly zero to the relationship, and that is what she would get. Well... You're obviously Canadian. I don't know how things go in Canada, and I don't know how long you're married to her, but clearly not that long. I must have gone to half a dozen law firms, and all were willing to take my case. But I knew I, I found I knew I found the right lawyer after telling her my story. Good. I'm glad you went with a woman, a female shark. She muttered, "It's time for you to be avenged." Actually, she said something else, but I don't want you to get in trouble, get a YouTube strike. I knew that was going to be, there was going to be a war, no quarter taken, no holds barred. The second prong was to collect evidence. My lawyer recommended a private eye. The PI worked together to examine phone records, expenses, determine spending habits, and more. <clears throat> Since everything Cindy spent was on my dime, it wasn't too hard to put the pieces together. Phone records, credit cards, and other bills told the story. During the day, it was clear Cindy liked shopping at the malls and boutique stores. But there was propensity for bars, pizza deliveries, restaurants, liquor stores, and other businesses that were usually near my brother's place. Even an occasional hotel showed up in the auditing. Here's a question. Was she doing your brother uh, before you got married or before you even started dating? Seriously. It didn't take long for the private eye to amass pictures of them together. I also had him install recording devices in my apartment. The audio evidence collected there was the most damning of all. My brother would sometimes come over when I was out and have relations with Cindy in my bed or on my couch. What a piece of freaking garbage. While you're out there working your tail off to try to make her happy. Remember your dad's advice, you need to worship her and do everything to make her happy. I think your dad was always jealous of you and was trying to sabotage. Whatever reason, who knows what it was. The third prong of my attack was to amass a battle chest. I told Cindy that it would be a good idea to start charging stuff to her credit card so she could build credit in her name. I said she could just give me the bill and I would pay for it. My thought was to start putting debt in her name. I'd pay off the minimum on her credit cards every month instead of the full amount. 
The full amount I would normally have paid off, instead it went to my war chest. The best part is that the credit card debt would be in her name, and she'd be responsible for it when time was for me to turn the tables. I didn't want to pay for any of it, but I needed to keep the charade up. Well, things didn't work out with you in the divorce, you'd be paying for her credit cards, but in this situation, you'll see how this goes. <clears throat> I started separating the bank accounts and putting uh, started putting money in those. It grew quickly while she was piling on the debt in her name. My war chest would cover the lawyers and the other costs in the inevitable divorce. <clears throat> it was my lawyer's suggestion who suggested a fourth prong. She said that a divorce is not a matter of the faint-hearted and that her clients that came out the strongest took care of themselves. I started eating better and taking time to go for walks, then hikes, then workouts. Good, bro. You mentioned you were overweight, so good. Gotta start taking care of your body. If you if you exercise and take care of yourself and, and don't put garbage into your system, you're gonna feel better. And when you're feeling better, you're gonna feel more resourceful, and that will help you. You need that. Aside from you should do that anyway. Over the next two and a half years, I lost 57 pounds, gained muscle, and started to reinvent myself. When there wasn't much I could do about my hairline, I went for the, the full Jason Statham Bruce Willis look. Works for them. So two and a half years, you were still married to her and doing... Oh, okay. Yeah. You caught them hooking up, but they didn't know you caught them. And you were doing this whole thing to catch them and all. Okay. I follow. <clears throat> Motorcycle going by, if you can hear him. Uh, the plan was falling into place, and I need a little more time to spring my trap. But no plan survives contact with the enemy. <clears throat> On Christmas Day, at my parents' in place, with the extended family there... Cindy made a surprise announcement. She was pregnant. I had no idea and almost choked in my Brussels sprouts. We hadn't had SEX in months. The, the hardest part was faking happiness and pretending to be a big dumb idiot. She even had the gall to say that she was surprised that I was mad enough to make a baby. <sighs> what an asshole. Everyone was laughing, smiling, and congratulating. Everyone except my brother, brother's girlfriend of two years. Somehow she knew what I knew and the baby was not mine. Well, maybe your brother's girlfriend can become an ally. And maybe after all this, you can bang your brother's girlfriend. I was seething and was ready to flip the dinner table, but then something happened. A strange calm came over me, and I stood up and, tink and tinked the wine glass. I said I would like to make a toast. I waited for the room to quiet down, let a few seconds of silence to sink in, and started my toast. He, and I said, he says here, This indeed is a happy day. For today is the day that I announced my independence. The table was quiet, and I looked at my brother and Cindy, and they both went white. In front of everyone, I told them about my marriage and how it was a sham. I told them all how I found out that they were cheating. I said I had pictures, recordings, financial records, that it was all there. I said the baby was not mine, as how could it be mine when we haven't had SCX in four months, maybe more. This was all said in a calm, balanced voice with just a little bit of passion. I felt like Lincoln giving the Gettysburg Address. It was off my chest, and I was free. I could finally be true to myself and not pretend any longer. Good for you, man. Guys, this story here, and I know there's going to be some people who are just going to say this is bullshit, because every story I do in this channel is always some guy in the comment section that says the story is bullshit. This goes to show you that a guy can be the biggest jackass pushover who can finally have enough, find reserves of strength down deep that he never knew he had, and can pull it together. And on many fronts, you were doing all what you had to do. And I'm sure your confidence went through the roof as you started. You lost 50 pounds, got in shape and all that. Good for you. And I was giving you a lot of shit in the beginning, but you need, younger you needed the shit to help other young guys out there not do the same things. But you're making a comeback. And we're just getting started. Uh, my mother and Cindy flipped out. There was name calling and gaslighting. My father stood up and said it was time for me to leave and to never come back. You're, I, dude, I don't know how things went afterwards. You know, I, I, I honestly I forget because I was reading a lot of stories here. But I'd have nothing to do with your fucking family after this. If your mom was good to you, if any of your, if your mom or sisters were good to you, okay. But your dad, never. And obviously your brother. But let's see what happens. I'd be like, fuck you, dad. I got up and said that Cindy wouldn't be welcome at my apartment and she should stay elsewhere. I said I would no longer donate my kidney to, nor pay for Cindy's lifestyle. <laughs> so, the whole kidney thing was going down two and a half years ago. Does it take that long to, to 
was his kidney like not at that point yet? I mean, that confuses me. But fuck him. You're not getting my kidney, asshole. The only thing that I would pay for moving forward would be a DNA test to prove that I am not the father. I dropped off my brother's girlfriend at her place, and then I spent the rest of Christmas night changing the locks and getting what, whatever amounts I could out of the ATM machines to lower the balances of our joint bank accounts. I also called and canceled my older credit cards just in case Cindy had access to them. I had recently got newer credit cards only in my name, which she wasn't aware of. So, well, I'm assuming you're in Canada, and what I've heard about Canada, they're pretty favorable to the gals. I mean, this was decades ago, but wasn't that her home? Couldn't she get back in the apartment? Then she has some uh, measures she could use to get back in her home. I mean, I believe you, but, you know, I'm just a little confused here. As both cars were in my name, but as she has keys to one, I moved that one to my work secure parking so she wouldn't be able to use it. My phone didn't stop ringing and my pager would, wouldn't stop either. Pager, huh? We know we're going back in time. It was that long ago. I turned them off and watched Die Hard on TV that night before retiring. I might have been the, it might have been the best Christmas I had up until that point. Uh, the next day, Cindy tried to return, but I would not let her in. She called the police and said that I had uh, I had done things to her. Of course, she did within the apartment. But after showing the police my different recording devices, they confronted her, and she came clean. Ooh, lying to the cops, not good. With help from the apartment block manager, the police also checked the videotapes in the hallways and saw that she had not been there when she said she was. I also showed them the tape, showed them that the title of the apartment was solely in my name, and that she continued to come by. I would consider to be trespassing. The whole thing played in my favor as the police, as the false police report made it easier for me to get a restraining order. Wonderful. About three weeks later, I was ambushed in, in my work's lobby by my parents, pampered brother and Cindy. They accused me of offing my brother and abandoning my child. Dude, I have known guys like you that have grown up in families and gals like you that they're scumbags and they hate you because they know you're better than them. They know you're smarter. They know you're a better person. All those things. They know you're going place. So they hate you and shit on you. I would say all you people are dead to me. Fuck off. And if you ever set and fight, uh, set foot here, I will have security drag your asses by your hair out of the building. I reminded them this child was not mine and likely my brother's, but who really knows? As to the kidney donation, you think someone who would get an organ donation wouldn't sleep with the, the donor's wife as a matter of principle, but surely wouldn't do it at least out of necessity. My dad went off on how I was a coward and not a man. I said he should give up one of his kidneys. I found out later through one of my sisters that my dad wasn't a match for my, my, my brother. Oh, darn. She suspected the incompatibility was due to blood types, and the, the in, inference was that me and my brother were not by my father's biological sons. <laughs> I knew it. I was suspecting that this dude here wasn't really his kid or something like that. I confirmed this a few years ago by taking an ancestry DNA test. It shows that me and my sisters are half-sisters, though I still consider them as sisters. I was able to find my biological father through their database shortly afterwards. I did tell my brother and parents this, but my mom denies it, and my dad still refused to believe it. This is Mr. You Need to Worship Your Wife. Well, guess what? The wife he was worshipping was cheating on him. Ha ha ha, you fucking dick. Anyway, back to my story. I would, know, I would not budge as I was under no moral obligation to do so. I was no longer the dutiful simp, but was now an independent and strong, successful male. You're goddamn right you were, man. You were born again hard. That's what that's what Gunny said in Full Metal Jacket. I said I had nothing to lose and was willing to drag out the process for years while she lives in poverty and while my brother weathers on the vine. I was able to get a barb in and said that if my brother was half the man that I was, he would provide for Cindy and his child. If he would be man enough to get married to her, I would reconsider the donation. <laughs> Over the next few weeks, Cindy, my brother, and my parents started to encourage Cindy's lawyers to speed up the divorce process in the hope of a kidney donation. My lawyer was thrilled as this meant major concessions. But of course, it's not legal to make any deal contingent on a medical donation, and so that could not be included. Oh darn. Had to be a verbal agreement, a handshake deal. Also, with all the evidence that had been gathered, it ensured that I would be seen favorably by the court. Uh, Cindy would not budge that the baby was mine. 
So my lawyer asked the court for a DNA test. Eight weeks after the baby was born, it was confirmed that I was not the father. Shocker. I kept the results in the safe to this day. Even after all this time, people say I walked down my wife and child, but at least I can show them results. They don't care. They don't care. While I was hell-bent on never letting her see a dime, in the end, I was able to walk away by covering only her legal expenses and the court filings. It was a small price to pay to get out of this nightmare. The best part is that I heard Cindy had racked up credit card debts of $30,000 and is still to this day paying them off. <laughs> now, mind you guys, that was $30,000 many years ago. Okay? Because he got... This, this shit all went down... You know, I'm guessing in probably in his mid to late 20s. So $30,000 was a lot bigger deal back then. It's a big deal now, but way big. 30000 decades ago, probably like, let's be honest here. If we're talking real inflation, double that. More than double that because the government bullshits on their inflation reports every fucking month. They always change the formula on how inflation is calculated. So I'm probably willing to say it's probably triple that. Probably close to 90 grand. And she couldn't pay it off. I'm being generous to saying that 30 grand 30 years ago is more like 60 grand. It's probably more like 90. My brother and Cindy did get married about a year later. Oh, a match made in hell. They sent me a wedding invitation saying that I was not specifically invited. That specifically I was not invited. I got a real chuckle out of it. I thought it would be a cold day in hell before I went to that awkward fest. My brother did get a kidney transplant shortly after, but from someone else. Cindy and he were divorced six years later. There's a freaking surprise, and she still had that credit card debt. And that is why I own a stock in American Express. And will, will to the day I die because of dumbasses like her. While they say revenge is a dish best served cold, the best revenge is living well. Amen, brother. Since the divorce, I've been promoted several times and continue to climb the ladder in my field. I'm a senior vice president. I am a senior vice president. Though money is nice, it is better to be poor and have your independence. I continue to be industrious and never stop improving. Most importantly, I am happy. The whole process made me mentally tougher, and I fear very little now. I could face a situation. I can face anything. I'm confident, happy, have a cavalier attitude, and do not take crap from anyone. I have a strong circle of good friends, including the friend who told me to run all those years ago. Strong mind and strong friends is what it, what it means to be a strong, successful male. SSM, keep up the good work. Not all men need to go through what I went through, but if they do, I hope they see it as a means of bettering themselves. All to the best, USSM. Keep up the good work. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year, Mike. Mike... That was a great story, and good for you. You went through hell and did an endless amount of dumbass shit that young guys do that don't have a good role model, which you did not. And I guarantee you the reason you had low self-confidence is because your family was treating you like dog crap. You said you have a relationship with your sisters, but with your mom and your dad treating you like shit all those years. Yeah. I mean, I'm picturing like Harry Potter. The way that, that yes, I watched Harry Potter, guys. I, I like those sh shows and read most of the books. But anyhow... How you Harry Potter people know that in the first movie, Harry Potter is treated like fucking dog shit by his aunt and uncle, you know? But meanwhile, the, 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 his cousin was treated like the prince. That's what I'm picturing in this situation. So, yeah, you've done great turning things around. And I'm, I'm really proud of you. And I'm glad you're doing well. And you got a family. And I'm sorry your, your wife passed a few years ago. And obviously, she was a good wife to you. But uh, now you're doing a good job raising your sons and daughter, and you're a mentor to young guys at work that need this kind of advice. You see, I made tons of stupid-ass mistakes when I was younger. Not those kind of mistakes, but plenty of stupid mistakes. And I learned the hard way. And now I do these, this channel and share these stories and smack all these people for being boneheads as a way to both, let's be honest, entertain, but also to help young guys learn through other guys' experiences. And if that can help dudes out around the world, then I'm doing my job, and, I, and I'm happy to do it every single day. So good for you, man. And yes, success is the best revenge. Living well is the best. Not, nothing feels better than you know, laying out uh, some revenge, but simply living well because most people are fucking miserable. So I'm really happy for you. Great story. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below and give this guy a shout-out for a big turnaround here. And be sure to like the video, share it with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.